born an athlete, you'll die an athlete. It's in your DNA. Live like an athlete so that you can be successful in life. You are an athlete. Live like it. ANA. America needs athletes. Welcome, athletes, into the gym closet for another episode. We are on 172. Got to take my gum out for the day. Here, as usual, with Zach. What's up? Missing again is Amber. She had, uh, she took Pierce to the doctor today. We got Ivy has a doctor appointment this afternoon that I get to go to. So we are in the middle of it here Fun. this week. Um, busy week for us. We were out of town uh, yesterday and uh, had some meetings in Kansas City. But you just got back from. Um, yeah, we took a How's trip. That? It was good. We went to D.C. to visit some friends. So um, it's nice out there because not first. Well, everything's really expensive on the coast, obviously. But sure, um, our friends have a place out there, so we really bought our plane tickets out and bought food when we were out there. But other than that, it's nice. really nothing. No hotels, and you know the nice thing like the monuments and stuff. You just walk around and they're free. Obviously, you don't have to. Pay. Yeah. yeah, I've never been to D.C. Really. Do you do you enjoy the historic? I do, yeah, I love it. This is actually this is like my I think that's my fourth time in DC actually. Really? Yeah, Damn. I've been there. We took like a family trip, and we took a church trip, and then a school trip, and then now this one. So this is my fourth nice. time. Yeah, so, so, do you like National Treasure? I do. I really do. Yeah, it's a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Could you could you buy into to some of those old? Oh, totally. Yeah, old I can totally I like see it. stuff like that going on. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think like the history of it is is cool. I think there's a lot of neat stuff out there. Yeah. I want to care about history, but I don't. Yeah, that's fair. That, that's like my biggest thing. I'm like, being a history buff would be cool to yeah. like know that shit, but my memory, I don't know if it's my memorization or what. Yeah. Like, I never got into history at school or it was probably who taught history. And that could be too, yeah. In school was yeah. not interesting. Yeah. The all. thing that, the thing that I think is cool about like DC is like, it's one of those things where like every, everywhere you go, there's something like, I mean, like you can you can see something like historic, like basically, like every block there's something. Really? You know, it's just like it's just throughout the whole city. You know, so I've heard good things. Have you been on uh, speaking of, like the East Coast? Have you been on uh, at like Virginia and some of those other places? That yeah, are so similar to like the yeah, whole so they so our friends actually live like half an hour what southwest of DC, I think is Virginia. So. So we were in Virginia, and so we were in like uh, Alexandria for it. So it's kind of the same thing where it's like all really old. Okay, kind so you've, of you've stuff, been in that same yeah. kind of area. Like, yeah. is that Richmond? Is is that like? Um, a, I think Richmond and maybe like farther south, maybe. Okay, I want to say, cool. but yeah. So it's kind of the same thing where it's just like all old and like there's lots of mountains out there yeah. and yeah we, we drove out to like the country one day there's a lot of mountains and like caverns and stuff that that's what the, in. the interesting thing for me is is seeing like the old shit like that that yeah. you just don't see in the midwest oh yeah the midwest even though it was settled at that time it was like right the there's oldest no... things you see here is the farmhouse right. you know what i mean or, right. or whatever the case yeah. yeah yeah that's interesting not i mean yeah it's crazy um but yeah, so today we have an awesome show. We have, uh, for those who are just joining us, um, we the, the Gym Closet is a Crave Gym podcast, so we talk about everything that is Crave Gym, how we train, why we train, why we live like athletes, and if you're not a Crave athlete, um, the reason you should continue to listen is because we talk about um, how to live your life like an athlete. Our mission is to... Uh, is that America needs athletes. So living your life like an athlete, which means how to live your life successful way, um, push yourself to the limit, uh, be as good as you can be. And so this uh, podcast, as we talk about some more specific things to Crave Gym, it should apply to everybody. So um, if you like this, if you get any decent information out of it, share it with a friend. Um, and hopefully we continue to grow. If you have listened to us and you have not, especially on YouTube, if you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. That will allow, that will, uh, alert you when we have new episodes and new stuff. We also have coming out this week again, our brand new, um, well, not, these are brand new episodes of our series, the coaches breakdown. So we break down certain lifts, certain things that we're doing in this season. Um, and we're starting that on a weekly basis as well. 
So we will have um, all of those things on our YouTube page. So make sure that you subscribe. If you're listening to this uh, as a podcast, awesome. Uh, Make sure that you're downloading. Make sure that you have us as a favorite podcast so you can hear when we drop. Usually every week, Thursday or Friday at the end of the week. Um, Sometimes we don't get to it if we're busy like last week. Yeah. But we talked about events. Yeah. Two weeks ago, we talked about the beginning of the season. um, And we're going to go back in time today and talk about the end of last season. We have um, challenge winners from last season. um, And so our challenge last season was an agility challenge. We're going as fast as we can through uh, hurdles, ladders, box jumps um, for sets. And uh, unfortunately, West Des Moines, Waukee won both. Let's go. Both uh, pumped. men and women, Waukee took it. So congratulations to Waukee, West Des Moines. As I am kind of the hometown or the, the home team, West Des Moines, I guess, is my home team, I would say. I would say so, um, yeah, technically. I, I, I uh, you know, didn't do my job as a, as a head coach. We need to push harder. We need to practice harder as a team. Um, but you know, we just couldn't come up with it this season. So, uh, hopefully, you know, next season we can really, really push for the, uh, the championship and, and be able to bring the trophies back home where they belong. No, so, uh, I did. Well, do my I, went job. Into, right, I went into press conference mode there for a second. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, we have, uh, so the championship was won by, uh, Waukee, both men and women, the winners of Waukee, we'll let you announce the winners of Waukee um, for women. Uh, for the ladies, I think it's just because you can't say. Uh, it was yes, that's- Lydia, and I'm so sorry, Lydia, Kurt, <laughs> Kurzizak. Lydia Kryzak. That's, that's 100% closer than I would have gotten to that. Sorry, name. Lydia. I know that's we wrong. We can spell too. it. We can spell it. Soon to be Lydia it. Weir. Right? Such an easier name. Yeah. Right? So we're so, good. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for the men. For the guys, we got John Kelly, which John has now won two seasons in a row, actually. He won Live to Live. Nice. And he won Beast. Make a Move. So, like, to, to win, like, we talked about it, I think, last time, too, where, you know, most people are going to be geared towards you know, maybe a little bit more of like a lifting season being their strong suit or maybe more of like an agility or maybe more of an endurance. But to win a strength season and then come back and win an agility season back-to-back, juggernaut. that's that's impressive. That's an all-around athlete the right there. juggernaut. John's a awesome. rugby guy, though, so it makes that's sense. That's true, yeah. Um, and we'll get into the new uh, challenge with the rugby team did it the other day, but... Um, for the challenge winners last season over at uh, West Des Moines Fee, um, he had, I think he, he and John tied, didn't they? I think so, the yeah. Team, yeah. They so, both had 50 seconds, I think? Yes. I think um, so. Yep. And so then also Elise had 50 seconds, too. So she That's crushed um, uh, Elise White and Fee Dang. We had, um, those two were the winners. So the way that we take the winners for the team is we average our top tens, and and so that's where they edged us out uh, by a couple seconds on each, um, men, on each side, men and women's. But um, I think Elise had the best time. What was what was Lydia's time? Lydia's time was I think fifty two, fifty three. We actually 53? had we actually had two. So I feel really bad. So I have to shout out Bailey Arnberg too because she also had a fifty three. And Lydia's second place time was fifty five, and Bailey was a fifty six. So uh, Lydia. Yeah got her second place time was like one second better so that's why so that's the only winning, so. that's so we rarely run into like a first place tiebreaker yeah, this is we, the first time keep, i think we've yeah. done it yeah so we keep track of the first place so that you know we we have every season we have a, a season winner um that goes up on the board so typically like for the top 10 we don't need tiebreakers because you know it's a it's a team sport at that point but the top 10 goes up on the wall for record breaking and that kind of stuff so um so we have to have the tiebreaker. So what we do is we go to the next best time that they've had. And so keep that in mind when you're doing the challenges that you can lose a first place if you dog it on your other challenges, even if you crush 
one challenge. Yep. If you tie, gotta be consistent. Gotta be consistent. Gotta so, have consistency. Uh, but both of those times are great. Fifty-six oh, yeah. and fifty-five are, oh, yeah. are good times there too. So then we'll, let's get into. Um, so congratulations, everybody um, that competed. It was an awesome challenge. Um, these are. I, I I've gotten great feedback from the challenges, and if um, if you're not, you know what what we're doing. We have a lot of really really cool stuff in the mix right now um, that we're developing, and. We are going to have these challenges posted not only for our athletes, but they can be replicated um, for anybody. So if you're in Florida, if you're in Chicago, if you're in Paris, you can do these challenges. Um, and I mention those because we do have Crave athletes in all three of those places. Yeah. So, um, so then we can do those challenges and they can compete with um, everybody at the gym as well. So one big team challenge event so and one thing too that i think that i've gotten a lot of good feedback to about these challenges and that i love about it and i think that you know hopefully in the future we'll be able to continue you know pushing even more of is like tyler said we do when we when we determine these team winners we take the whole top 10 and average those top 10 times so like there's people that are sneaking in you know ninth and tenth into the top 10 and like this season it was like a second or two in between both locations as far as as far as team winners. So like those like ninth and tenth places, like that mattered a lot this season as far as um I think I think I don't have to go through like the numbers again for sure, but like Tyler said, West Des Moines had the fastest female, but Waukee's, you know, fifth through tenth places were a little bit faster than West Des Moines, right. fifth through tenth, you know. So at the end of the day, that is what one Waukee, the team trophy this season was the the whole top ten rather than just right. one or two people kind of pulling it off. Yeah, you know if that makes yeah. sense. So, yep. Yep. so just keep that in mind too. That you know we, we get that sometimes where they're like, oh maybe I'm not gonna be the fastest time, or maybe you know 53 seconds is you know flying. Obviously, maybe that's not something that you're quite there yet. But if you can get a minute and shave off a few seconds off of, you know, the average time or the top 10 time, that makes a big difference. And that's, to the you know, team so, each time. Yeah. So, and that challenge will also be on our summer classic coming up here this summer. So keep that in mind as well. On that summer classic card will also be our 666 challenge that we started here this season. This week on Monday was the first day of challenges. Um, I'll let you talk about it, uh, Waukee here in a second, but at West Des Moines, it was <clears throat> chaos in the best way possible. Everybody was crushing it, going as fast and as hard as they can. Um, it, you know, we had huge, we have, we've been having huge groups. So we've had, you know, three rounds of the yeah, challenge. I know, that's and, super cool. And that's yeah. the coolest thing that we can see. Um, so everyone's cheering each other on. Everybody's going through the challenge, um, you know, competing as hard as they can to beat their own time and to go as fast as they can. Um, and so to a little bit of inside story on, um, on how the challenge, how we do the challenges. So we've made these challenges like a year ago. I know we mentioned that before, but this is the first season that we're doing this challenge particularly. So we, we don't ever know like we design them but we don't know how they will fit into the full spectrum of our athletes um and so our goal was to have a two minute to like five minute uh challenge round right so that that's how long we want this challenge to take and then we also want to the other goal is to have the weights picked out so that men and women are both around two minutes to, to five minutes, right? Um, so in this challenge, at least in West Des Moines so far, it has it could not have worked out more perfect. Some of the best times for, um, for men were around the two minute mark. Some of the best times for women were around the two minute mark, um, other than the rugby guys, which I'll give a shout out to all the Des Moines rugby guys, but um, they had, we had a, and they don't count in the team, um, as far as our athletes, but they do their strength and conditioning through us, and so they should count, I think. Um, I know. <laughs> but they had a 138, a 140, and a 142. And yeah, those guys, rushed. those guys are nuts. Yeah, and like, then Amber I, yeah. crushed too. So Amber, uh, um, Amber Robinson here, uh, she got a 140, 
and crush that weight too. Yeah. So I would um, like to think that if I could do it, because people people ask me, they're like, "Oh, Amber did it. Are you have you done it?" Like, yeah. I can't. Sorry, I right. still can't. Still torn pad. I would love still to. recovering. I would like to think that I'd probably get probably like a low low minute time probably right minute, like one like one one yeah somewhere in the low ones probably. Yep. yep. We I calculated and I was like, okay, so if um, she did twenty five seconds sets. Yeah. Because it's four times three. That is flying. And that is flying. That is fast. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to do it. I was challenged by um, Alicia and Al and Matt that Amber would crush me if I would if we were competing next to each other, and then they didn't even know her time. So then I got her time, and I was like, "Fuck, that's fast. That's fast. That's super fast." So I'm not going to compete against that time. But I'm going to arrange a time. Amber uh, challenges on. We're going to arrange a time to do it together, at the same time. So if she accidentally messes up that time and right. doesn't put another 140 on the board, then I'm, my goal is still to beat 140. But all I have to do is beat her in the moment at the time. And the really, the I'm important thing to remember too thing. is that as long as you might not be able to beat Amber, but as long as your time improves throughout the season, that's exactly that's the exactly. important stuff that's at the, the end of the day, part, right? You know, improving um, yourself. Right, exactly. And I love that. Um, or beating your significant other. That could also be a goal. <laughs> that's always a goal <laughs> of mine. Uh, no, but it, it'll be a fun uh, competition that we will do and we'll set up a time to do that. But um, huge shout out to everybody that was crushing that challenge. Um, and a huge shout out to the people that um, had a hard time with the weight, whatever the case might be, if you, you know, the goal is be better than yourself, like you said. And if you are, you know, front squatting the 95 pounds, front squat press 95 pounds, and you, you know, you might've only gotten three reps in a set. And then, you, you know, that was your, your max until, um, then, the, the goal then is to get as close as possible to getting those six reps, as close as possible the next one, as close as possible the next one, so that hopefully by the end of the season, you that weight is a doable weight for six reps for you. So you're getting stronger. You're working on these things. We also have uh, front squat press uh, in our uh, training session. Surprise, surprise, they, they kind of match up what we want to do. So we will be working on that all season long. And so we want to improve on those things as well. And, and we had a lot of people that maybe couldn't press it. And so now we're, we will work on the press side of things or we'll work on the squat side of things. And so there's, there's a, a spectrum of, of, um, of athletes that you competing against yourself and getting better. That's the ultimate goal. That's why you come to the gym. And so that's what we want to concentrate on as well. And, and getting better every day yourself is, is exactly what, um, you know, what being an athlete is, is all about, uh, just like, you know, and it's strength season. So we don't expect everybody to excel in strength season. Like we talked about in the past, someone that is going to win in endurance season may not win strength season and that's fine, but what they should do is they should get stronger, um, throughout the season. And so that's, that's kind of what the, the goal would be. Um, and, and the challenge can reflect that. So, um, Ultimately, like I had some people be like, oh, this is an endurance challenge. Holy crap, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, it's it's not unless you're like if you're very, very strong and powerful. Right. It become it feels like an endurance because the weight feels light. But to say that it's an endurance challenge to someone that, you know, is it's difficult for a 195 um, uh, squat press. That's a strength challenge, oh, right? For sure, and so yeah. that's that's where the spectrum comes in. The stronger and more powerful you are in strength season, the lighter the weight is going to to be because the weight's set for everybody, male or female. And so, if the weight's lighter, your time's going to be faster. Um, and so that's what you know. That's what I'm banking on. I'm not an endurance athlete myself. If if you hadn't known that before with me, but I am hopefully strong enough that the weight that we're using feels light enough that I can go faster than than someone else that the the weight might seem heavier for. So that's like my what I I'm telling myself this when I'm competing against Amber too. Like the weight hopefully feels lighter for me than Amber's weight feels for her. Like that's that's the that's kind of the baseline. And if that right. works, then I can then I can um, I can grind it out for a minute and a half. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. endurance for a minute and a half. If, if, if you get your competitive hat on, 
I can do a minute and a half sprint. Like that, I mean, that, that would be our 400 that we talked about before, too. Right, yeah. Yikes. That's true, yeah. I do not want to run a 400 no. anytime no, soon. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's um, kind of the challenges and, and the stuff that we're doing here this season. We are knee-deep into uh, strength season. So it is – sorry, I'll um, go back over to you. What was your kind of overall feeling that the athletes had – for the challenge and some of the feedback that we that we got. Well, I was gone on Monday. Oh, you were. So, oh, I don't know, yeah. but I did talk to people about it today, and I've talked and I talked to Amber about it, and it's kind of the same thing. It, uh, we have really, really, really positive feedback. Times. Um, let's see. I looked through the times. I th- yeah, we had we had some people that were breaking into you know the one minute times. You know, I think we had three or four maybe total that were that broke two minutes. So nice. kind of the same thing where you know it's um you know, not necessarily a super, super long challenge. I think that's, we put a lot of thought into this one, actually. We, we tweaked this one. We tweak all of them, it seems like. Because like we said, we, Prior we, to, we figured yeah. it out like a year ago. And this one we've tweaked a ton. We've kind of gone back and forth on um, to make it more of a power and a strength and speed combined challenge rather than an endurance challenge because it kind of was starting out, we felt like it was going to be that way. So we, you know, bumped the weights up you know, added more elements of, like, speed and strength into it. Um, and I think, you know, from the sounds of it and from what everyone has said so far, the time that we've got that, you know, that's exactly what it's turned out to be. So definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's the challenges that we have rolling. Um, again, we do them every week on kind of a stair-stepping Monday this week, Tuesday next week, Wednesday the following, Thursday the following. And so um, keep that in mind. You should do them at least. They, they should take up – they should be – integrated into a different workout every other week um, if you stay on the same training schedule. Uh, if you do hit, um, you know, if, if your schedule's all over the place, that's fine. But if you hit multiple, you know, every other week, then just good luck. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a brutal schedule yeah. to uh, to have to jump into our challenge multiple weeks in a row. And you know what? Just deal with it. Right. Deal yeah. with it and do it. I don't no care. bitching. <laughs> just, just do it. It's a great workout regardless, so that's what we're here for, right, is a great training session. So, um, and, and that's kind of the thing, too, that I always, you know, remind people, too, is that the, the challenge every season is geared towards that season, obviously. So, like, even if you do happen to hit this challenge three, four weeks in a row, you're developing power on a normal day. You're developing power when you're doing the challenge, you know, so it all goes together at the end of the day. Definitely. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So the next segment we got, did you want to do, um, are you out of here at a certain time? No. Okay. i got all sorts of time. Um, did you want to, did you have a myth to bust yes. today? If all I right. can remember it, I sure will. Let's yes. So it is, um, today we're going to talk about, and I feel like we talked about it before, but I just think it's always a good one to talk about during strength season, lifting weights and losing weight and kind of the myth that you have to do cardio rather than lifting weights for weight loss. So... It makes sense, I think, if you look at it from a very, very, very distant perspective of a lot of people associate cardio and endurance type stuff with your weight loss and lifting weights and strength training with your building strength and gaining muscle mass. And unfortunately that, you know, I don't know necessarily why that came to be, um, but lifting weights is a great, great, great way to promote weight loss and continue and and have sustained weight loss as well. So, um, cardio, endurance, that kind of stuff, when you are, when you're doing that, it gets you a great acute calorie burn where, you know, if I was to go and, you know, run a mile, I might burn, you know, 150 calories when I'm running that mile, you know, during an endurance season, you know, if I was going to, you know, look at my Apple Watch, which brings up a whole other thing, and your Apple Watch isn't that accurate, so don't, you know, let that be the, <laughs> the end-all, end be-all. Yeah, I think I saw a study, actually, recently that it was, like, it could be up to 40% off either way. So if you burned 1,000 calories, would be a, a crazy high number. But say you went out and you ran a few miles and it, you, you burned, you know, 1,000 calories, According to your Apple Watch, it could be anywhere from what, from six hundred to fourteen hundred calories that you actually burned. That's crazy. So, yeah, but that's another myth that will that will bust another day. Um, so, and what I'm what I'm really glad about is that we haven't had this conversation at all with any of our athletes yet over in Milwaukee that I've known. Um, 
yet this season because it seems like every strength season we have this conversation. So maybe by talking about it enough on the podcast here, it's getting through to people and, and people are kind of realizing that it's not the case. Right. Um, but so you have that when you're doing an endurance workout or you're doing cardio and going for a run, you get a really, really good acute calorie burn, right? You're burning a ton of calories in the moment to fuel that workout right then and there. Then afterwards, you're not really getting a ton of calorie burn from that workout throughout the rest of the day. Whereas with strength training, resistance training, and when we're doing the, these heavier lifting seasons like we are right now, you might not burn the same amount of calories as you're doing if you went for a run or did an endurance session in the moment. But what happens is your body has to recover a lot more from that session later on in the day. So it takes a lot more calories six, eight, ten hours later in the day um, to then go back and repair those muscles and you end up getting this much more sustained calorie burn throughout the day. So um, a really good example, I actually had a, a personal training client that we've been doing kind of the same type of program for, you know, three, four months now of kind of a, a combination of, you know, strength and agility and endurance and kind of combining everything. Um, and just kind of switch some things up a little bit. He's got, you know, some, some different goals now. So we've kind of switched to a lot more heavy lifting, a lot of rest time in between, in between sets, very similar to our, our strength seasons that we have for the team sessions. And, you know, he left and he was like, oh, that was, you know, really not that, not that hard today. You know, most of his workouts before he would be you know, dripping in sweat, you know, walking out the door, you know, super, super tired. You know, last week when we switched to this kind of new program, he was like, oh, I'm really, you know, not super tired today. And then he came back in the next day and was like, you know, I went to bed at eight o'clock tonight because I was exhausted. exhausted. I love it. And I woke up the next day and I was exhausted and I just felt completely different. And that's because you're getting that sustained calorie burn throughout the day. It's so. all about residual. Um, and so talking, I, I make, I'm huge with analogies, but anybody that's like, up with their finances and investing and that kind of thing. It's all about the residual income that you can get, right? So if you have, you know, 0% interest that you're putting into the savings account and you just put money in there and it's just sitting in there, that's going to be the, the amount of money you put in is the amount of money that's there, right? Right. right. If you put that same mm -hmm. money into a residual, you're investing it, it's, it's, you know, increasing 6%. That's kind of the, the idea of, um, you are burning, you are putting the acute money in, so that's hopefully there, and then you're seeing a, a interest, a return on that money too. So, um, you know, the, the, the interesting thing that, that you have to just think about is that residual calorie burn and what that does. Not only that, but then also uh, to, to, further, to um, even elaborate on that more is People talk about how do I boost my metabolism? Oh yeah, lifting weights, gaining muscle mass is the best way to boost metabolism because what happens is you actually your body will have to burn more calories to support added weight, added muscle mass in your body. That's just sitting doing nothing. And so we've talked about basal metabolic rate. What do you burn just sitting on the couch, breathing, existing? That is your biggest chunk right so we if you can make that go up and and every single day now your body has to support um you know 100 pounds of lean body mass versus 90 pounds of lean body mass you're going to be burning a lot more calories which then helps with weight loss and so that is that's a huge part of um of the equation that that oftentimes get gets overlooked when you're thinking about weightlifting is it's it, you're not just thinking about like you said the acute uh, we never all we never want to and we don't it crave think about that acute day like our day today fits in with tomorrow fits in with the entire scheme the entire season the entire year right the same way that you should think about your building blocks of training where you want the acute burn so it's not bad to do endurance it's not bad to do agility and, and some of the extra conditioning that we have but that is helping you less than the weightlifting side of things when it comes to building muscle and, and making sure that you have additional muscle mass to boost metabolism, which we talked about almost, what, a couple weeks ago as, so, as yeah. your biggest, um, 
expenditure of calories is just your bas uh, basal metabolic rate. Um, and so if you every single day worry about, oh, I'm going to burn this 150 calories doing endurance, and you could get that residual on your basal by lifting weights, you should then take time to, to lift weights and cut into that acute um, endurance sessions. So, um, so that's a big, you know, that's a big part and a big myth that I think a lot of people have is that you don't think about, you know, that, um, that residual calorie burn, um, but then also the, um, the amount of increased in metabolism. Those are kind of the two factors I think that, um, that you want to think about when you're talking, uh, weight loss with weightlifting, um, that oftentimes gets overlooked. So, um, so yeah, myth busted. Oh, yeah. I like it. I like it. anything sure. else we want to talk about on that. I don't think so. I mean, I think really the, the big thing that I always hear people talking about when it comes to lifting and kind of some of the, the, the resistance that comes to weightlifting from a lot of people and not, again, not to stereotype, but it tends to be more on the, on the female side of things is they don't want to get quote bulky. Um, which and I tend we were talking, yeah, we were talking about this the other yeah. day. Cause I heard someone say this the other day and they're like, I don't want to drink protein shakes cause I'm going to get bulky. That is borderline offensive yes. because to, I've been to gain lean yes. muscle mass is insanely hard. Like it is, you have to eat so much food and so much protein specifically to gain lean muscle mass. Like I can guarantee that nobody is going to accidentally, accidentally get yes. bulky. That's it's what's so impossible. funny is there's, there's like, so many people and, and I guess, Bulky, what's the definition of bulky, right? right? And, and that's the thing. But yeah. people talking about lifting, meaning that they're going to get bulky, is are assuming that it's muscle gained. Now, if you think about bulky as in fat gained, then that's easy to do. Right. But, yes, it is offensive for, oftentimes, I'll, I'll get I'll get heated when, when someone comes up to me and, be, and has that conversation where, well, I don't really want to lift heavy because I don't want to get bulky, and I'm like, hey... I've been trying to yeah. get bulky my feelings are, for 20 are years. And if I have worked my ass off and I have difficulty continuing to get bulky and you think you're going to come in here and just accidentally do it because you're lifting heavy, you have another thing coming. It is effort. It is hard work. It is volume every single week, progressive overload. All of the things that go into gaining muscle – is not going to be an accident. So get that out of your mind if, at, at first. Um, but I do think that there is a uh, a subsequent thought on bulkiness because of muscle and fat gain during like a quote unquote bro bulk right. where I'm eating as much as I can and right. lifting. That's the best way to gain muscle. Right. But that also is going to gain body fat right. if you're eating in a surplus for that amount of time. That's the best way to gain muscle. But um, if you're eating at a deficit or even at maintenance and you're and you're lifting, it's still very hard to um, put on muscle. That is after what we've talked about in the past as the newbie uh, gains. Um, so we can talk about that again sometime. But yeah. Um, but yeah, we've talked about that in the past. So if you follow us, you kind of know what the newbie gains is is all about and the reason why it continuously gets harder and harder to put on muscle as your body is getting more and more used to it. So then you start thinking about progressive overload and, and hiring, hiring your, hiring your volume, raising, raising. Yeah, raising. there we go. Hiring is not a word. Hiring. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, and raising your volume for that. So, um, so, uh, today, a uh, quick word of the week, um, is, uh, kind of just off topic. It's a random one that I was thinking about, um, in the last week or so, and it's, I feel like a lot of people are embarrassed or they, um, so there's this, there's this curve that is, that is super interesting. And this curve basically is kind of like, I don't, I can't, I don't know what exactly it's called. It's actually like a scientifically backed, uh, studied, um, phenomenon that, as a, if you are a novice or you don't know as much information, you're very loud. Right. 
I just saw as this. You, I'm gonna to, I'm gonna go find it. I just okay. saw something about and it. And then as oh, you get, as you learn more, you realize you know less until you are an expert, and then you you know uh, and then you sh- you feel more comfortable talking about it and all this kind of stuff. So when you know nothing, you're very loud and you can share opinions on it. And because you don't know as much about it. It's one of those things like you you don't know what you don't know. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, and, it's, and then you, you have go, no idea how much. And then you go through the there. stages yeah. of knowing. The more you know, the more you know you don't know. And then you're like, holy shit. Okay. Uh, I know a little bit about this topic now. And I'm realizing I don't know shit. So I'm going to shut up. You know what I mean? And then you continue to research that and continue to work on that. And you put in whatever the, whatever the saying is. A thousand hours, a million hours, yeah. whatever, whatever you, makes you an expert, right? And then when you've done that research and you've 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 taken it to that level, then you're an expert. And so today, the word of the week is expert. Um, that curve is very very interesting, and, and when you find it, we'll talk about it a little bit more. But um, uh, it's and, called the the Dunning Kruger effect. Okay. Yes, the, the Dunning Kruger effect. effect. Yes, and. Um, and so look that up if you have any questions on it. It's a bell curve of um, know nothing about it, think I know everything about it, know more about it, know very little, and then I'm an expert and I know everything and I feel like I know everything. So, um, so an expert is a person who has comprehensive and authoritative knowledge on a skill or a particular area. So. A lot of this means, uh, you know, in studies, PhD, doctorate, um, master's degree, different things like that, um, which are valuable. And I think that, you know, in certain fields, that is a, um, a necessary uh, step to take, but not in every field. So um, I think one thing that oftentimes gets overlooked is a mechanic, a uh, concrete worker a uh, carpenter, right? Those people, I would say, are experts in their field oh, yeah. at a certain point. And, and I, 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 I might have been thinking about this as I'm doing uh, house projects, and I'm like, shit, I'm not a, a tile layer. You're like at and, the very, the very like second part of the curve, right. at the very bottom. Yes, And yes. you know like, that you know nothing. I know that I know nothing now, and I'm doing a ton of research, so I don't fuck my house up. And so, like, that's that's where I'm at with that work. But but the biggest thing that, that like, I, I want to talk about is striving to be an expert and getting to that expert level in whatever you do, right? If you are even a gamer, right? It, it doesn't have to – people get paid to play video games, and those people, I would uh, be – they would be the authority on video games. There's, oh, an, yeah. there's an authority on – every single thing that's out there. And so one thing we always talk about is, you know, pushing uh, to achieve your goals and being successful uh, both in the gym, but then outside of the gym, um, we're talking about, you know, being an expert in, um, in whatever trade, whatever job, whatever you do, you should be an expert in that and, and do, take the steps to uh, train yourself to be an expert in that and and continue to be the authority or continue studying until you're the authority in your field. Um, We talk about it all the time, you know, being the CEO of whatever job you're doing. And if you're mopping floors, being the best, uh, the best person to mop the floor that that uh, that that place has ever seen is going to help you be successful and and move into a position, um, whatever position that you're wanting to do. But that effort and that um, that uh, grind at what that what it takes is is the expertise. And then that's something that's on your resume. Whether it's like not talking about like your actual resume, it could be, but it doesn't have to be. If, if those skills start stacking up on each other, then you um, then you get better and better at your profession and you can become an expert in different areas, right? So like, uh, for I'm going to use Zach as an example, right? So Zach started as a coach, right? And he was an excellent coach and he continues to be an excellent coach, but he, he got to, you know, expert level coaching, right? Where 
at Crave Gym. He knew everything there was to know about the seasons, the the purpose, the the periodization, everything that he knows. He was uh, he was a expert level coach, right? Um, and then he he took over as a head coach. So then there's there's new things that that take time to continue to be an expert at, whether it's um, you know working with uh, prospects or or how to make a sale and all those type of things. All of that, he started not knowing much and through training and through his experience, continued to get better and better and better. And now he, I would say he's an expert head coach. Um, and so there's there's different levels to every job that you could have. And that's even, even where we started. Amber and I opened this business eight years ago, not knowing shit about business, like we were in no way experts at being at being owning a business because we had never done it before. Right. So we were ex- expert level coaches at the time. And because we were as expert level coaches, that's what we focused on. We coached and we continued to work on other skills to hopefully become expert level business owners, expert level head coach and, and work our way up. And so that's kind of the, the stair step that took us to um, to where we are today. And if we just stopped and said, um, all we care about is being expert level coaches, we want to just coach for the rest of our lives. For a lot of people, that's okay. If you don't, it, but, but make sure that you're an expert at it, right? Make sure that you continue to get better at, at that coaching, at that skill, whatever the case might be. And then if you want to take the next step, you've already had that on your resume, Take the next step and put another feather in your cap. Learn another skill. Accumulate another um, a, another helpful tool in your tool belt and and take the next step. Or or don't. That's that's the cool thing is you have that choice, right? right? right. There's people that probably that, that are out there that are janitorial staff that just love what they do. And if you are an expert in the in as being a janitor, that's and, and that's what you want to do, be the best, live the best life that you want in that profession and and continue to be an expert in that field, right? And so that's that's the thing that I want to strive for and, and some action steps is, um, you know, take an, again, we, we inventory our, our lives a lot on this podcast, but take an inventory of your life and say, okay, what are the skills that that are needed for me to be successful in my job in uh, whatever I'm doing right now, and am I as good at that as I could be ever? Am I the best? Am I the authority on cold calling and making sales if I'm a salesman? If I'm not, what steps can I take to become an expert at that? What what podcasts are out there? And, and it's easy to Google um, best uh, cold calling techniques for uh, for a new salesman, right? There's going to be podcasts out there that talk to you about that. There's going to be things that you can, um, that someone's the authority on the thing that you want to be an authority on. So listen to that person, start um, accumulating the skills that are needed to become an expert at cold calling if that if that's your livelihood, right? So that's the thing that, um, that I want to work on this week is what are the things you can work on and, and what are the steps, um, what are the, the things needed to, to become an expert in that? So um, that is the word of the week. And that is all I got for you. Me too. That's nice. it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us uh, in the gym closet today. Um, again, if it's your first time, definitely hit the subscribe button if you are listening to YouTube. Um, download the episodes if you are listening um, on a podcast and uh, make sure that uh, hit our thumbs up on YouTube as well. That helps to uh, the algorithm and blah, 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 blah. Helps us do stuff. Um, so the more people that can listen to this, if you found it, um, if you found it to be, uh, you know, interesting knowledge, if you found it to be helpful in any way, awesome. That's what the goal is. And if you can tell a friend and, um, and spread the word, that is all we ask. And remember you are an athlete. Live like it. Born an athlete.
You'll die an athlete. It's in your DNA. Live like an athlete so that you can be successful. You're an athlete. Live like it. ANA. America needs athletes.